Next, uh, as you see from the, everybody can sit in there and talk uh, from here. Thanks so much. Uh, so next is Matteo Marsili, is a theoretical physicist uh, from the uh, uh, ICTP in Trieste. And, um, uh, well, you hear, in fact, um, we're looking forward to the reactions of uh, people from statistical mechanics uh, to all we've seen. Um, uh, just uh, as, as uh, let me remind you while he prepares for the talk that uh, all participants will have lunch ready in the billiard room for the, because of the way way structure we don't have space to put it elsewhere. And whereas I'm, uh, I'm uh, inviting uh, the, the, uh, the speakers, I invite the speakers to sit at the table there just to chat a little bit. So, Matteo, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for the invitation, actually. Um, um, so, uh, I think we are running a little bit late, so, but uh, I, I can make my talk uh, shorter. I was... Uh, uh, um, because essentially uh, I'm, yeah, I'm a theoretical physicist, so, so I was a little bit embarrassed, uh, especially to talk after uh, Simon and Parta about things uh, I do not uh, really, uh, I have no real great contribution. So, but I think uh, what uh, statistical physics uh, can contribute is probably some, uh, um, um, some uh, methods to deal with the uh, uh, complex, uh, with the complexity with, that arises in uh, in the issues which are uh, discussed uh, in the, this. I, I took these uh, uh, sentences from uh, the description of the workshop, and uh, and essentially highlighted the couple of things I think I may uh, be able to uh, say something in terms of uh, uh, methodology. So the first part actually is about uh, 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 discounting. Uh, so when, when you think at uh, an intertemporal optimization, uh, already Ignazio Musu has uh, discussed this, and uh, also part has discussed this. There is the issue of uh, uh, of uncertainty, and uh, especially uh, there are uh, um, uh, there is a dimension where. Uh, um, the, this intertemporal uh, problem may be a very complex problem, uh, or maybe a, a, a problem uh, where the volatility also matters. And these, I think, uh, are uh, two aspects on which uh, I would like to uh, uh, share with you some uh, thoughts. Uh, of course, uh, uh, this will be mostly on the uh, on telling you what uh, uh, mathematical results one can find. Then. Uh, I'll leave to other people the interpretation or the use of these things. There, there was a, there's a second part uh, um, which I thought I could contribute on. Uh, I think uh, there is a, a mention of global drivers, uh, and I've been uh, very much uh, uh, looking into uh, global finance and trying to understand where global finance is going. Of course, one can see look at global finance as a ecosystem, so really stretching uh, the, the scope of the workshop, but I think uh, probably uh, uh, I may uh, skip this uh, second part for the interest of uh, having lunch. Okay, so we'll see. Okay, so this is just to tell you where I come from. I come from uh, a place which is called International Center for Theoretical Physics, uh, but of course you understand the physics uh, is inter interpreted uh, very, very broadly. Uh, so, indeed, as part of uh, uh, what we did, um, uh, we had also this program uh, in the past where uh, Parta and uh, Simon uh, and others also from uh, uh, Fondazione Enni, Enrico Mattei, were, were involved, uh, um, uh, even sitting in the audience. And uh, that was uh, a very, very uh, interesting uh, program. So we, uh, we are, uh, uh, so the, our mission, as you see, the miss, uh, mission of the uh, center, as you may see, is to foster uh, advanced studies, uh, uh, especially uh, in, in developing countries, uh, helping uh, scientists in developing countries. And uh, it's also in a very beautiful location. Uh, so this is uh, Miramare Park, close to Trieste. 
So, um, so uh, the problem I want to talk about is uh, the one of uh, uh, optimal planning. So the, the idea is the following. Um, um, so the idea is, th is that uh, you, you have, uh, in general, uh, um, you are sitting at a certain time, point in time, and uh, there are a certain number of uh, decisions uh, which uh, the uh, society has to take. And uh, for the sake of simplicity, decisions are binary, and uh, it's plus or minus one. We like spins, being physicists. So, um, and so you can think uh, that there is a binary tree which uh, uh, unfolds. And uh, you, you can think uh, that, of course, uh, uh, the social planner uh, today uh, belongs to a certain generation, and um, there is a certain uh, uh, say, uh, contribution to the utility of uh, this certain generation, and uh, uh, then uh, um, and the, the, the current generation has to take. Uh, decision up to N, and then uh, the next uh, generation uh, will take uh, the next N decisions, and so on. Now, um, and you can think uh, there is a, there is a uh, discount factor. So let me be more specific on uh, what, this, uh, what I mean by these uh, uh, utilities here. And, uh, so by this utility, I mean, uh, I'm really thinking of a, um, um, uh, a rational uh, benevolent uh, planner. So the, uh, uh, the, the utility of uh, generation, uh, the current generation, is really the value function uh, uh, computed based on all the information that is known presently. Okay? So, <clears throat> so the part, uh, the second part, uh, is the part uh, which is unknown, uh, 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 which uh, is the part of the utility of, of, of the uh, of the uh, the utility which is unknown and which is uh, uh, essentially related uh, to uh, volatility. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so you can think uh, that this part is. Uh, really uh, the difference, uh, uh, the unanticipated uh, difference. It, 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 again, this is based uh, on, the, on the information that uh, the next generation will have at uh, when it is born. Okay. Yep. Ah, okay. If I use question, okay. do you mind? So, and uh, so it's um, contingent on this information, is, uh, it also depends uh, on the action, on the decision that has been taken by the previous generation, okay, and so on, okay, so you can think uh, that this is uh, essentially the, the problem. Uh, do interrupt me at uh, any time. Are you to interpret this as that each generation lives for n small n periods, right? Yes. 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 And every day they have to take a decision. And of course, you know, small n is is large. It's going to be large. <laughs> As, uh... So the choice problem is uh, so the first uh, uh, generation <coughs> will take uh, the optimal choice, and I'll denote it as uh, S hat in what follows and is a particular uh, uh, path. And, uh, but uh, this uh, may not uh, uh, correspond to the uh, optimal choice if all the uncertainty were known. Okay? So, and this I will uh, uh, denote that S star. Okay? So the question uh, uh, I want to focus on is what is the probability that uh, uh, the optimal choice, the optimal plan uh, uh, at generation zero corresponds to the uh, optimal choice. Is this clear? Okay, so... Um, so these what, are... What am I missing? If you come back to the previous slide, yeah. what are we missing? I mean, 
at time zero. Yeah. Oh, I see that zero only maximizes what? Maximizing capital now. Yes, yeah, so, so the, 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 uh, this uh, small u of S0 is uh, uh, the expected, uh, it's essentially the value function for generation 0 um, for its uh, string of choices uh, based on easy information. Okay? So it's not the full information. Okay? So it's averaging over, uh, uh, the, future. over the future. Okay? Whereas, uh, uh, based on uh, all the information, you can get uh, the optimal path, the optimal uh, string of... Uh... Now, um, so the question I, I'm going to answer is, uh, ask is, uh, under what condition uh, uh, you can neglect, essentially, this, uh, this fluctuation, this volatility, okay? Now, um, <coughs> As uh, uh, Professor Muso was saying, essentially the problem is that uh, uh, the, even the choices that the next generation will face are unknown to the current generation. Uh, uh, let alone, uh, say, the contribution to the wealth, to the utility function, or to the social uh, wealth. Okay. So the problem is uh, is the one where essentially in these uh, uh, three. So the, uh, up to a certain time, you know what are the choices you have to take. You know what, what is the expected utility. After, uh, well, you, in your expected utility, you include uh, some part of the consequences of these actions, which you expect uh, to. But you cannot include uh, many things that you don't know. OK? And again, the problem is to find uh, 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 under what condition. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yeah. At the dotted line, yeah. that date, does zero generation know there are four um, nodes immediately to the right, <coughs> and eight nodes immediately after that you know that, or you don't even know that? Okay, that's a, that's a very good uh, uh, question. Indeed, that uh, should uh, not be... Uh, you would think uh, that it does not even know that. I'm going to assume that this is known. Well, if you, can, if you can make, if you, if you can actually add nodes, there will be a Steiner tree problem, which is a complete mess. It's, a, it's completely hell of a mess. Now, let's assume that for the time being, you know at least the number of decisions. Yeah. I'm going to make it very, very simple. So. So the issue is, uh, what, what do we, uh, how do we model things that we don't know? And we are very lucky because uh, uh, there is a very precise way to, things, to model things that you don't know, which is maximal entropy. So maximal entropy is uh, the mathematical uh, uh, way in which you can be precise about uh, uh, not maximal ignorance, essentially. Okay. So and uh, if you use this principle here, what it tells you is that uh, for any value of the string of choices up to today, and for every value of the choices tomorrow, you should think uh, at that uh, utility as being uh, an independent and identically distributed random variable. Because, because it, if it were uh, not uh, uh, independent, you should know something about the correlation. If it were not identical, you should know something about uh, uh, the difference in the distribution. Okay? And you, you think that all these differences, all these differences has already been put into the utility of, uh, uh, at this stage, in what you know, okay? Very good. So, um, <coughs> now volatility uh, uh, enters uh, in uh, what is the form of this uh, probability distribution, uh, uh, what is the uh, form of the probability distribution on which you are drawing, from which you are drawing these, uh, these uh, things here, okay? And, um, <coughs> okay, so this is, uh, uh, I'm not going to take this assumption, sorry, so forget about this assumption. Um, <coughs> so let me first uh, uh, focus on the simplest case uh, where you have just uh, two periods, okay? 
So you have uh, uh, um, the current generation and the next generation. So the current generation uh, deals with uh, choices up to small n, and the uh, next generation has to deal with uh, the choice uh, from n plus 1 to big n. Okay? So, <coughs> and again, uh, there are, uh, these are binary choices. And I'm going to assume that both small n and big n are very large. So the utility, I'm going to write it simply as uh, uh, u of uh, uh, the, the choices of the current generation plus the part of the uh, next generation, okay? And, uh, of course, uh, the first part uh, uh, is the known part of the problem. The second part is the unknown part of the problem. Now, <coughs> there is an uh, intertemporal optimum, uh, which is uh, essentially um, when you take the maximum both on the unknown variables and the known variables, and is uh, denoted as uh, S star. And uh, there is the uh, optimal uh, plan for the current generation, which is uh, S hat, which is just the maximum of the first part. Okay? And the question is, uh, uh, how, uh, when is it that uh, these two things are uh, the same, okay? Now, you see, in this setting, uh, 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 this is an answer uh, that uh, can be, that one can, uh, this is a question that can be answered, because one can, uh, uh, given the probability distribution from which I draw the, the V, um, uh, I can compute the probability of this event, okay? And this is uh, uh, what is, uh, then here is essentially an, uh, an exercise uh, uh, in uh, extreme value theory. And uh, what you have uh, um, to know is that if you take, the ma if you take a, a number of independent random variables, you take the maximum, this has a, a very specific distribution, which is like a universal distribution. And in particular, if all the moments are uh, uh, finite, if you have uh, your distribution of V, which decays faster than any power, then this, the, the distribution of, uh, um, of the maximum is proportional uh, to a, a variable which has a distribution, uh, which has a gamble distribution. It's a do double exponential distribution, but it, I mean, it, it's just important that uh, uh, um, we know that what the distribution is. Okay, what you can do now is essentially... Uh, what is capital Y now? It's a, it's a random variable with a given distribution. Is a, uh, so, the, the, so, the, um, so the Vs are random variable, so the maximum is a random variable. So I'm saying this, uh, uh, this random variable is a constant A plus another constant beta to the minus one times y, which is a random variable, okay? And this y as a distribution which I know, okay? Now, given the distribution of y, you can compute uh, the probability of uh, this event, uh, that s star is uh, e equal to any s, and uh, this is just uh, the probability of the event uh, that uh, the, the, the corresponding uh, 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 y s plus u s is is larger than any other uh, value, okay? And it's a, it's an integral you can do, okay? And what you get uh, is this form, uh, which is familiar to uh, physicists, is uh, Boltzmann distribution. But uh, the nice thing also that you get is that you also understand, you also can compute uh, what uh, this uh, coefficient beta is, okay? Now. And here you start to uh, see the one interesting point is that, uh, so if you take uh, a distribution uh, which has this form, uh, which the case has uh, v to e to the minus v to some power uh, for uh, v large, okay, there's a stretched exponential uh, uh, behavior, then you can compute exactly what this beta uh, is. It depends on how many unknown variables you have. Huh? This large n minus small n. Now, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, if you have uh, thin tails, uh, if your uh, uh, distribution decays faster than an exponential, then you are in a thin tailed world. 
where this beta increases with the number of things that you don't know. The more things you don't know, the larger is the beta, which means the larger is the beta, the more picked is your distribution on the maximum of the utility. Okay? Whereas if you are in a fat-tailed world, uh, in a world where uh, your distribution of uh, utilities decays slower than an exponential, then your beta decreases with them. Then the more, so this uh, beta is, uh, is very small uh, if n is very large, which means that your distribution is very flat. Okay? Now, uh, let me illustrate this. Uh, in particular, you can uh, work out uh, <coughs> explicitly the case where also now the, uh, the utility of the current generation is drawn from a distribution uh, independently. Okay? So this is the case where you draw it uh, from a Gaussian distribution. And this builds on uh, um, uh, work that has been done uh, uh, long ago by physicists on the so-called random energy model. But essentially what you can see is that, uh, um, <coughs> so what you can uh, uh, essentially do is to plot the probability that uh, your, uh, um, your best plan is the optimal choice. And you see that uh, uh, for a certain, uh, uh, this is the uh, ratio between the number of, is what is the fraction of choices that are taken by the current generation. And uh, you see that uh, for a given uh, uh, ratio, so as long as uh, the discount factor is less than a certain value, you can have a, a finite probability that uh, the current plan co coincides with the optimal. Okay. Uh, if you have a discount factor which is larger than that, uh, this probability is exponentially small. Okay. So with the probability one, you are not. Uh, um, so this tells you, uh, this gives you, uh, to some extent, uh, um, uh, a, a maximal possible discount factor uh, under which uh, you have some confidence uh, that uh, your optimal plan is also uh, uh, taking into account uh, unexpected event uh, that can occur in the future. So the larger is capital N the more you have discounted. Now, the <coughs> so here I'm taking, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, true for uh, uh, both small and, and big and uh, large. Yeah? That's right. Now, the issue is... Uh, the more you're discounting. Yeah, so, so there is, there is, a, uh, there is a, a sort of... Uh, um, <coughs> Uh, an intuitive uh, result here is that for a given discount factor, um, if you know uh, if you know little, then uh, uh, you can uh, be optimal. If you know too much, if, if you are trying to optimize too much, then uh, uh, with probability uh, and uh, so, so this is. Uh, eh? But the intuition is related to the fact that uh, the maximum of, uh, uh, of this, here I'm in, in a thin-tailed world, so the distribution in particular here is Gaussian, okay? And the intuition is that uh, uh, the, uh, if you take a maximum of uh, more and more Gaussian variables, the fluctuation go down, okay? Whereas, uh, uh, if you go to a fat-tailed uh, uh, world, the things are completely different, okay? So uh, let me uh, give you an intuition of uh, why uh, this is so. So the, the intuition is the following. So, <coughs> again, you can think at uh, your optimization problem as a, as a problem of uh, finding an optimal path uh, in, this, uh, in this world. Uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, the current generation uh, will find uh, some optimal, which is the red uh, part there, okay? Then uh, the next generation comes, uh, and it will take uh, its own uh, optimal path. Its optimal path will be uh, restricted to uh, the, pos the cone of possible futures that, start, that are conditional 
that are contingent with the choices taken by the previous generation. Okay, so if you think at how big, how, what is the contribution to the global utility, to the, to the utility <coughs> of these two parts? Uh, so the so the, the um, <coughs> And this is where you have to do a uh, very little bit of math. Uh, so you can find out that the maximum of uh, 2 to the n uh, random variables drawn from uh, this distribution should be of order uh, n log 2 to the 1 over gamma. This is just saying uh, that you have to find that threshold in the distribution such that the probability, when you integrate the probability, you get uh, uh, 2 to the minus n. Okay. It's a very simple calculation. Now, so, uh, if you combine the two optimal paths, you, you get that uh, the, 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 the two optimal paths uh, um, will give contributions which are proportional to n log 2 to the 1 over gamma and n minus n log 2 to the 1 minus gamma. Uh, <coughs> whereas, if you... Uh, if you were to take, uh, um, um, you can think of another path, uh, and you can think uh, at the path which uh, uh, maximizes uh, the, um, over all the possible uh, futures at the next generation. Okay? Here you have to maximize over 2 to the big N uh, values of the utility. So the value of, uh, the, of uh, the, 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 the maximal variable that you can get, in this case, is uh, big N times log 2 to the 1 over gamma. Okay? And here you see that uh, if you are with gamma, which is larger than uh, uh, 1, then uh, um, the solution of uh, gluing together uh, the optimal solution today and the optimal solution tomorrow is optimal uh, because uh, uh, 1 divided by gamma is less than 1 and uh, the function is convex. Okay? Whereas uh, in the other case, when uh, gamma is uh, less than 1, 1 over gamma is bigger than 1, then uh, it is better to do, uh, I mean, to just uh, let, uh, I mean, uh, 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 the optimal path, path will be anyhow um, uh, dominated uh, by uh, uh, whatever is optimal for the next generation, okay? And uh, <coughs> so, um, yeah, so this is, uh, this is uh, the main intuition. So the probability that uh, uh, your optimal path will uh, coincide uh, uh, with the, uh, with the, the optimal plan up of the current generation will be uh, optimal uh, and long run is essentially exponentially small. Okay, you can generalize this to many periods and uh, the idea is that, uh, uh, well, you, you can uh, think of uh, uh, taking all the parts from, uh, uh, you can think of many generations and uh, all the parts which goes from generation uh, k plus one to infinity you can uh, summarize it into uh, uh, this variable v. And then uh, what you can find is a, a recursion relation for these uh, random variables uh, here. And, uh, and now the nice thing is that, uh, well, you can, uh, without doing any math, you can just do simulations. OK? So you can draw, uh, you can start from distribution of v, uh, draw these variables. Uh, multiplied by delta, uh, add uh, uh, an independent variable drawn from the distribution of u, then take the maximum and get one uh, uh, variable v. So you can build a distribution for a population, and then you can do it again. And, um, and so you can do uh, simulations. Once you have done, uh, uh, you have reached a, a stationary distribution for the v, you can compute what is the uh, current optimum, current uh, optimal plan, and what is the best optimum, okay? What maximizes just this part, and what maximizes the sum of the two? And you can compute the probability that these two are, are equal. And what you get are essentially the same conclusions that uh, as long as you are in a, in a uh, world where uh, the volatility is uh, 
uh, not so severe. The, uh, this, the distribution falls off faster than, uh, than an exponential. Essentially, uh, your pro the probability that your current plan is equal to the optimal plan is finite. If you are uh, in, a, uh, in a very volatile, uh, in a, in a fat-tailed world, which is this one, where the gamma is less than one, then uh, um, essentially as you take uh, longer and longer, uh, I mean, uh, longer and longer stretches of decisions, your probability goes down, okay? Unless uh, if your delta is very small, and, uh, well, if your delta is very small, you are not caring anyhow for the future, so. That's, um okay, so this is uh, um, the uh, contribution I wanted to tell you. So I think uh, it, what this tells is uh, that one should uh, um, uh, take into account, uh, I mean, if, if complexity and uh, volatility are to, uh, they may be two important problems, two important components in uh, addressing this issue of what is the optimal uh, uh, discount factor that, uh, that one, uh, one has to ap apply. And uh, <coughs> I think uh, we are running uh, very late. So let me just mention uh, uh, two things uh, that I wanted to tell you about this uh, second part. Um, so this also has to do with, uh, with the complexity and uh, with the complexity which uh, we do not, uh, I think we do not really appreciate and uh, understand. So if you look at the distribution of sizes in economics, uh, they, since uh, Pareto, they've been found to follow power laws. So this is probably one of the most well-established uh, empirical facts or empirical laws in economics. I don't know if I can say so. But uh, and this is. You're allowed to say. Thank you. To prove it. So this is uh, this is uh, a paper by Axel in 2001 where he was plotting the size distribution of firms. He was again finding this uh, power law with this exponent uh, which was close to one. Okay. Now people have wondered why this is so. Uh, um, uh, it is because of proportional random growth. So uh, essentially wealth uh, or size grows proportional to size with maybe a stochastic process, uh, and this uh, naturally leads you to power loss, okay? Now, uh, the third uh, contribution which makes the point that uh, this value of uh, exponent uh, um, is, uh, <coughs> I mean, there are situations where this value of the exponent is larger than one, that are qualitatively different from a situation where the value of the exponent is less than one, in the sense that when it is less than one, you have a finite fraction of the people who have a finite, uh, a finite number of people, the biggest guy, who have a finite fraction of all the size. Okay? Now, <clears throat> now if you look at what we have done is to look at uh, uh, the numbers of the size of uh, firms uh, uh, in the global market today. You can do it by looking at uh, Forbes uh, Global 2000. And uh, it's a sort of a scary thing because the size of uh, the biggest, uh, I mean, they are all banks and the main financial institution, and their size is essentially of the size of, of the order of GDPs of countries. So, uh, but there are two, um, two um, um, puzzling, uh, puzzling uh, features here. One is that uh, this is not a power law, there is a bending. And uh, the other one is that uh, the exponent is less than one. Okay, so the, the exponent of uh, the, this, this, uh, uh, this power law is less than one. So this is what I want to uh, comment on. The other uh, very scary things, uh, you may see that recently, while the uh, total asset uh, in the rest of the eco these economic firms has not been growing, the assets in finance have been growing a lot. And um, so, <coughs> so as I tell you, there are two, two things. I mean, one thing is, if you look at uh, uh, the distribution today, 
you find that the exponent now is less than 1, is around 0 0.9, whereas uh, uh, in 2001 it was uh, actually, this is data from 1991, uh, 1999, it was 1. Okay? And uh, the second thing is that there is a deviation here in the upper tail. Okay? So the first thing uh, uh, makes you wonder whether the, we have passed uh, uh, a phase transition. Uh, here I did this exercise of plotting these exponents, uh, uh, so this gamma should be A, sorry. These exponents uh, uh, for the data in Fortune 500, which goes back to the 50s, and, but is also for only for the US, and for uh, global 2000, which unfortunately is only available since uh, 2005. And, uh, and it seems this exponent has crossed one. So this, this you know, is a hotly debated uh, issue now because there is this book of uh, Piketty and uh, inequality. And, uh, and I think uh, this is a quantitative uh, uh, sort of uh, statement that I think should be put on a firmer basis. Uh, you see that Axtell was uh, just <laughs> publishing his paper when the exponent was crossing one. So the second thing is uh, that we did... Uh, one. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, at least from, from what I can say from this. The second interesting thing is that uh, um, um, what do you do with this, uh, this, uh, this deviation? And essentially, uh, this is just a methodological contribution that you can think, uh, uh, you can take uh, this uh, deviation, measure its size, uh, and give an estimate to shadow banking. Uh, shadow banking is uh, all the, um, uh, uh, the, the part of financial uh, uh, intermediation which is not regulated with the outside regulated system. And the argument is a little bit like uh, the same that physicists use for uh, uh, dark matter, okay? So the idea is that you have some uh, well-established laws, gravitation, and uh, you look at the redshift, uh, you see how much mass should you have to account for that, uh, and uh, you don't see that much mass, so that must be dark matter, okay? And you can estimate how much it is. In the case of dark, dark matter, it's 95% of the total, so, I mean, it's not a small effect, okay? And you can say this the same, but there is a very well-established empirical law in, in economics. Uh, means uh, size should follow a power law. And the uh, theory is proportional random growth. Uh, and then uh, uh, there is a deviation. Uh, there must be uh, some dark assets around. Then you still have to explain why the dark asset moves in a particular direction away. Yes, of course. We, we do not have uh, any explanation, uh, any theory. Uh, well, we have many theory for dark matter, but uh, we do not know even yeah. what it is. So, so, and, and I think uh, th that is a very good point, because I think we really do not know what is going on in finance now. So, um, so, so this is about uh, what shadow banking is, but I just want to uh, tell you that uh, there are people in the um, Financial Stability Board which has been dealing with this issue uh, in detail. They have been mapping the flows of uh, uh, capital uh, um, assets from one uh, institution to the other, uh, uh, tracking all these things and, uh, uh, and getting out with an estimate of shadow banking system. And uh, we instead get an estimate by just looking at how much mass is missing from the upper tail. And the results are uh, quite uh, remarkably good, in the sense that uh, in the end uh, you get uh, uh, an estimate which follows closely. So <coughs> this was our prediction, then uh, compared to the data, then uh, the uh, Federal Stability Board uh, uh, issued uh, its last prediction, which is rising. And, uh, and now what we can do is to uh, give uh, our last prediction, which is six months ahead, and which is still, uh, which is still uh, rising. And, uh, uh, well, apart from uh, the fact uh, uh, whether this is true or not, I think uh, uh, the methodological contribution that I want to make is, is that you can... Uh, uh, look at uh, deviation from well-established uh, uh, empirical laws 
to uh, understand what is the size and what is the uh, uh, size of what uh, um, what is causing these deviations. In this case, you can also do a, a, a simple model, which is uh, essentially modeling what um, what is happening, what is, we know has been happening in this uh, ecosystem. That is part of the assets that put off balance sheet by the largest bank with the, this securitization procedure. And so, and you can, in this way, you can uh, measure the intensity. You can fit this model and measure the intensity of uh, these processes. And uh, well, the good news is that uh, our fit tells us that the intensity of this process is going down. So uh, this is uh, uh, um, what I wanted to tell you, but if you want to know more, there is a paper on that. OK, so thank you very much. Thank you, Matteo, for this uh, 